Hello everyone, I am the Lore Explorer, and as always, this video will contain spoilers for Outer Wilds Echoes of the Eye. In today's loop, I want to talk about arguably the most complex piece of technology in all of Outer Wilds, a literal artificial ring world hidden behind an actual cloaking device. And that's not the only extraordinary thing about it. During my playthrough of Echoes of the Eye, I actually found myself just blurting out the word strange while experiencing my time there. So I don't blame the developers for the name, they got it spot on. But in this video, we're going to talk about The Stranger and discuss how it might actually work. And as usual with Outer Wilds, it's hard to even know where to start with The Stranger. So I suppose I should just start with the big one. How the heck does this cloaking device work? I mean, let's think about this now. The only way I found this artificial ring world with the cloaking device is by seeing it. Or rather, since it's not depicting our sun's light like all other stars or even planets, we see it's eclipse. But if it's able to depict all of the other stars light and even planets, why can't it depict our stars light as well? To be honest, I don't think it's too odd after thinking about it. It seems to me that the stranger somehow projects a shot of darkness or somehow absorbs all light and projects what is normally behind it from whatever angle. The way the internal screens work, it seems a stranger is recording all of these angles of space simultaneously. So if the stranger somehow takes all of this input and projects it onto the shroud of darkness or the void of light or whatever, it looked like we are seeing the light from the stars behind it coming through. Almost like wrapping a car in a screen and having the screen show a video of whatever's behind that screen. Now I can't really explain how they would be able to do such a thing, projecting darkness onto nothing or absorbing all light and project, I, I, I don't know. But thinking about the Alks for a second now, their entire species seems to revolve around light. All of their machines are controlled by light, their rafts are steered by light, their paintings or secret doors only open when there is no light shining on them. Heck, even their form of communication with each other seems to be light based. They somehow convert their thoughts into light and then project them out. Point is, light. The Alks seem to be masters of it, so it doesn't seem so far-fetched that they'd be able to record all of the light hitting the stranger and even project it out into the darkness, or lack of light around itself. But let's think about this from the stranger's perspective in consideration of the sun. This has to be projected from all angles at all times to be an effective cloaking device. It has to be able to project the stars to Rebic on Brittle Hollow and to Chert on Ember Twin and us potentially 20 kilometers above the sun at the same time. Really, every angle there is, 360 degrees around the stranger at all times has to be projected because who knows when and where people are going to be looking at it from. Now I understand that the sun would only have to be projected at certain angles, but what would it look like if the stranger also projected our sun's light at all times? Well, wouldn't it sort of look like a small blocked off sun shining off into the darkness? Shining in the opposite direction like a beacon to nothing? I mean, wouldn't it be a huge signal to anyone nearby to come and find it? I'm not entirely sure how this would look like, to be honest. It might just be like, you know, the stranger blocking out that light. We might see its quote unquote shadow. But in my simple brain, I think it'd make much more sense to just depict darkness in that area and hope that no one looks from the angle that would show the sun. The chances that someone could get the stranger between themselves and the sun are so low that they actually coined the term astronomical for things like it. So really, I think that's something that can be thought of as odd at first, but upon reflection, it makes sense that they wouldn't shine out so much light to match our sun at all times. So in my opinion, that's the big one down. I think the second biggest question people have after they visit the stranger is, wait, how the heck did it just kill all of my velocity? I was pummeling at this thing at 500 meters per second, and now I'm going like three. Is that even possible? And to be honest, as far as I know, n no, it's not possible. I have no earthly idea how the stranger may be doing that to us, but it does. And you know what? That's okay. Some things are just done for the sake of the player. How are we meant to judge our speed coming up to this object when our target is invisible? I like to imagine that in-universe this doesn't really happen, but for the sake of the player, the game slows us down. But that's just my headcanon, so don't throw me off a cliff for it. 
but even though they made aspects of it bend reality for the sake of the player, at least in my opinion, to me, it does seem like they went out of their way to make the whole thing seem realistic for us. It's a neat note that once we get close to the stranger, the lights on the metal part are guiding us to the docking bay. Then, upon seeing the docking bay, it's shooting out a light for us to come to. It's sort of like a lit up runway showing us where to land. I can see why this would be needed for a ship like this. A stranger would serve as the mothership, you know, being an entire artificial world. And when they first crafted it, they probably foresaw the need to fly to individual planets or distinct locations. But having a completely dark object like this, the pilots would definitely need guidance. It makes me wonder how often they actually use them though, and where, and when. Did they explore our solar system, or did they just plan to explore the ice planet? Whatever the case, they at least thought they'd use them so much that they'd need a shortcut from the viewing area and control room to the docking bay. There are just a bunch of details that I really appreciate them taking the time to think about. The entrance to the actual insides are mostly vacuum sealed. Both sides having airlocks to allow transition between the two different pressures since the inside is actually filled with oxygen and, you know, whatever the makeup is. One thing that throws a lot of people off seems to be the water inside the stranger. They admit that the rotation of the stranger would create the artificial gravity that we feel, but they claim that the way it all works, the water system seems unbelievable. Now, I'm not a physicist, as I'm sure I've established multiple times by making obvious mistakes. And we have to think about this in a rotating reference frame, which I'm not too good at, but let's just say that the crust, or whatever you'd call this landmass, is seriously hydrophobic material. There is almost no friction between it and the water. The water just glides on it as if it were floating. Then, everything sort of starts to make sense to me. As the ring rotates, it'd be trying to push the water along with it, but the lack of friction would end up leaving it behind surface tension or even some manipulation to the water would keep it flowing in the channels. Now all of this together would give us this amazing sense of rushing water uphill as we rotate along with the landmass and the water gets left behind us. I think eventually this system would lead to a static level of water and that's normally the problem I think people have with it, but this is why they added the dam system. As the water level would go to even out, the area vastly widens and they added a dam to catch all of the water. Now with the greater pressure than the water below, it gets bottlenecked and forced through these small vents, slowly replenishing the water. They may have even added a heat source to it here to keep the water a regulated temperature or energy state that the system needs to be in, but it seems that the water here is artificially managed somehow and they even sort of plan for like some flooding a little bit but the whole system seems to work if we just simplify it like that. Now I understand that the whole thing is sometimes moving and I'm sure there are a hundred other different reasons why this is probably not working exactly as I described here. But again, it's okay to suspend our scientific analysis for the sake of enjoying something presented to us. And it's okay for the devs to present us something not exactly scientifically accurate for a great experience. Or just to simplify the scientific concepts for the enjoyment of the player. Like, come on, if we take this too seriously, we all just be upset that the 14.3 billion year later slide is actually the flat heart theory realized. That's our worst nightmare. I think this is the dev's way of sort of poking fun at us for analyzing it in such a hardcore scientific way. But even if it's not true to real life science, they really do go out of their way to make it feel real. As we mentioned before, the stranger does have this weird gravity. It's altered a bit to make it feel real to the player's senses and feel right, but the gravity here is artificially created by the rotation, completely fake and only created by this ring. We can actually find the highest point on the landmass, jump onto the highest tree, and fly our way to the center of the stranger. And if we do this, the gravity gets all confused and we can essentially just float around at zero G. This is because we're now independent of that rotation that would create the gravity. And the developers even went out of their way to add detail to the artificial sun in the stranger. Not only does it have a cage and wires and whatnot, it has a freaking radiator attached to it to disperse heat. On the off chance that you literally climb every tree in the stranger, then use your jetpack at full boost, then be so desperate that you actually use your scout for a little extra boost 
they added a radiator to the light, just in case. These kinds of details nodding to reality are what give me the pleasure of looking past some things or just simplifying them. But that doesn't just give us the green light to look past everything, especially these panels that give off a green light, which is my terrible transition over to what most people have been calling solar sails. And we're gonna have to try to figure this one out together because I'm sort of at a loss here. Now, after studying them, it totally makes sense if they were solar sails. Solar sails use the pressure of the sun to slowly accelerate away from it, or rather manipulate their velocity a bit. They are certainly collecting a lot of sunlight right now, and physically, they'd be working just like solar sails. The normal side of the stranger, even when the sails aren't open, could be collecting enough photons and pressure to combat the sun's gravity. Then, when they open the sails, they'd catch and reflect even more sun, allowing it to accelerate away. And it's obvious that as soon as these sails open, the stranger does start accelerating quite slowly in exactly the direction that we would expect from solar sails. All of this added up seems like a lot of evidence for them being solar sails, and I can't deny that is all true and sound logic. Now, honestly, we can stop there and call it a day, but to me, that sort of seems at odd with what we see in the rest of the DLC. Firstly, these panels look exactly like the other glass throughout the entire Stranger. You know, the glass that is light activated and has mechanisms that move when we shine light onto them. Wouldn't it make more sense if these panels work the same way that the other glass does? Secondly, when the sails start to open and the whole station loses power, the sails blink out along with the station. When they first start to open, they look active and lit up, like light is being shown on them. Then, they blink out with the station as it loses power. Doesn't this suggest the solar sails are consuming power along with the station? And the panels opening activated something that consumes a lot of energy? Why would solar sails need to light up when they just need to open? Maybe they want it to be a certain wavelength or color to reflect as many photons as possible? But to be honest with you, here's what I'm thinking. Maybe, just maybe, the species that mastered communicating with light, the species which seems to be able to feel or understand light on a fundamental level, actually did find a way to harness the inherent power of light. Maybe not in the traditional sense of just using the light's pressure, but more along the lines of a photon redirector or engine of sorts? If we look at all the similar technology together, then it seems to me that this green glass captures as many photons as possible and then redirects them in the direction needed somehow. Or, at the very least, they found a way to harness the power from it and all the actual mechanisms work in a much simpler way. I can't say for certain how that would all work. It just doesn't seem as simple as solar sails using pressure. If it were, why make it look like the same as the other light activated tech? Why have it actually blink out when the station does if it were simply using pressure from the sun? I don't know guys, like I said, I'm not a physicist and as I mentioned before, it does make sense if they were solar sails. But my job is to take what I see in the game holistically and try to explain everything simply. Even if we said solar sails are the huge green panels and it's that simple, we're still left trying to figure out the rest of the green panels in the game. Just holistically, it all makes much more sense to me if the species who base their entire culture off light somehow use their innovation to be able to use that ability for space travel as well. And keep in mind as I say all of this, yes, regular solar sails make sense, but that's not where the lore leads in my opinion. We'd have to look into it more. As I said, we need to figure this one out together. So let me know what you think about those sails in the comments below. And if you have any other big questions about the stranger, be sure to drop those as well. But I think I talked enough for one video. If you liked it, consider hitting the thumbs up. And if you want more content like it, be sure to subscribe here and hit the bell. As usual, a special thank you to the members here on the channel. I can't thank you all enough. And as always, this is the Lore Explorer, fine with relaxing my scientific analysis with this one. But only because if I take my flawed understanding of physics and try to apply it to the stranger, I think I'd just be left sitting here muttering strange all night. But I think that might be the point. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.